loss, reflections, and crosstalk are the three main things on a PCB that can cause a serial link to fail. And just looking at the S parameter data of the passive interconnect can give you a good indication of whether or not any of those are in excess. We've made a number of enhancements to the touchstone viewer in Hyperlinks 9.2, including the addition of these protocol specific metrics. Now these come from the IEEE 802.3 Ethernet standard, uh, most notably Annex 69B, and they basically describe a, a number of different metrics taken from the S parameters that can indicate the successful operation of a serial channel. So we support a number of different Ethernet standards, uh, different port numbering, so you can go ports across each uh, individual piece of the channel or all down one side, depending on how you want to number your ports. You can, if you have a uh, S parameter with multiple differential pairs, you can specify which is the victim and which are the aggressors. And so let's take a look at some of these different uh, metrics we have here. So looking at just insertion loss and return loss are good ways of characterizing the quality of a channel. But we can also look at uh, things like fitted and attenuation and insertion loss deviation, which also take into account the variation from reflections. Since the reflections, any impedance mismatches are also going to be present in the insertion loss and, and return loss numbers, uh, looking at just the attenuation is helpful to see how much you're losing just from loss. So if I look at, for example, the fitted attenuation of a 12 inch versus a 22 inch channel, I can see that both uh, have very different fitted attenuation, but they're both pretty much above the uh, attenuation limit. Uh, if we're to look at a, a 42 inch channel and look at that fitted attenuation, then it exceeds that limit. Now, going beyond that, the insertion loss deviation is going to be the difference between the fitted attenuation and the insertion loss. So if we look instead at the insertion loss deviation and put the limits on that, this is a good indication of whether or not you have multiple reflections on the channel that are causing a problem. So here with the short channel, it looks good. With the longer channel, also looks good. And with that long 42 inch channel, still fairly well behaved. So even though these channels all have different attenuation, uh, the insertion loss deviation gives us a good indication that uh, reflections aren't an issue on these channels. So they have a nice matched impedance. Now if we were to throw something else in there, like for instance this channel, which has a very long via stub, and look at the insertion loss deviation on that, we can actually see that it's in great violation of the insertion loss deviation limits because it has that very large reflection uh, in it. So these are some good metrics to, instead of just looking beyond insertion loss, to be able to see the difference between impedance reflection type problems and actual loss attenuation type problems. And then there are also a number of different uh, crosstalk metrics. So if I go in here and uh, turn off our insertion loss deviation, we can look at some of those crosstalk metrics. So if we look at the power sum near end and far end differential crosstalk on our, our back plane here, so it looks like we have very low near end crosstalk and the far end crosstalk on this backplane is definitely noticeable. Uh, if we look at the crosstalk on the longer backplane, uh, we can see it's it's uh, actually a little bit lower. Note that it'll have the, the same attenuation as uh, just a single channel. So 
the crosstalk is is going to tail off as well at the at the higher frequencies. Uh, here's an even longer channel where you can see that attenuation coming into play again at the at the power sum differential crosstalk. If we look instead at the insertion loss to crosstalk ratio, we can get an idea of how our crosstalk compares with our loss. So if we turn on that ratio and then turn on the limit, uh, we can see here that this channel is, is just barely making it and is in that, that high confidence region above the limit. Uh, if we look at uh, another channel here, maybe a, a longer channel with the same uh, 15 mil spacing between the pairs, uh, it's, it's also passing. So uh, if we were to go back again and look at that one with the, with the long stub, on the via, which was this one here, yeah, we can see that it still has a bit of a uh, big discontinuity there that's causing us to violate that spec as well. Uh, but that is, is due to the actual stub. So uh, we can see the other two fairly well behaved and uh, above the limit for the insertion loss to crosstalk ratio. And those are some of the protocol specific metrics that we've added in Hyperlinks 9.2.